Okay, so we are streaming to Facebook. Um, but again, this is our program for us. And we are, yes, we are live on Facebook. So you guys on Facebook, thank you for joining us. If you want to like actively join, I'll put the link where you can um, join the class. Uh, let's see, where is it? Here we go. But um, put it in the comments if you want to actively join our class. Um, if you have any questions, you guys can chat with each other in the comments section. But um, I, you are going to be voyeuristic joiners of our program while I and this like really amazing group of students uh, work together. So one of the most important aspects for manifesting anything is to um, be really receptive to that still quiet voice, to the little messages that you get. When I scheduled like the programs that I'm doing now in January, I wrote up my schedule last fall and I really had no idea what I was going to do when and how. It was a few months ago and who even knew what was going to be happening in the world. But the uh, my guides, the librarians of the Akashic Records, were very clear that on this day, I would start working with people who wish to transform, to manifest reality, to be in the image that best resonates for you. And uh, because reality begins with you and your immediate reality, right? But they said this class to share with the world because they wanted everyone when reaching out to our soulmates and our soul family to feel connected, that they wanted this to be a big connection. That this is a time when so many of us are feeling uh, personally disenfranchised and cut off and disempowered. Um, so you guys, last night the librarians channeled messages through me and I have, it's on my Facebook page and also on my YouTube the Bonita Woods YouTube channel, all the videos in which they talked about reclaiming your power and utilize, don't forget all the beauty around us <laughs> as we are going through difficult times, the beauty around us doesn't stop existing. That is always there for us to continue feeding our spirits and feeding our souls with. Um, So what is manifesting and how do we manifest people into our lives? <laughs> the first stage of manifesting is really daydreaming, you know, feeling that there's a yearning for something out there. The second stage is, you know, to then possibly detail it a bit, enough that you can grab it that it becomes a little tangible for you. But then you look to yourself and you look at everything within you that is blocking that from being in your life. You have to acknowledge it and deal with it, release it. Otherwise there's no room for this wonderful thing out there to connect with you, to merge with you. And then you do whatever it takes to get from where you are to where you want to be. Now, this is like the same technique, no matter how you do it, whether you're shamanic, angelic, druidic, you know, praying to God, writing a business plan to make your business successful. It's always the same, right? You know, if you decide you want to start your own business, you still have to make a business plan. And then you have to figure out what's happening in your life that this isn't already happening. And you go step by step to make it happen. 
it can be a lot of hard work. Manifesting does not mean, poof, magically things happen. It means that you do whatever it takes to redefine reality to be as you wish it to be. Now, for some people, this can be really a lot of physical work with no help from anyone. And for others, it can be they ask for it and it just magically starts appearing for them. It depends on what technique you use, what practice, how comfortable you are with receiving, how much you feel you deserve to get what you're asking for. So the more you clean out the clutter within you that's preventing you from having what you want, and the more you are comfortable opening up to whatever you're opening to, to invite whatever energies or beings or essences to support your wishes, the easier it can be, depending on what you're asking for, of course. So this is why I'm like, we need a little extra time because that's such an obvious statement, but still you're like, yeah, but I don't know what to do with that, <laughs> I'm sure. So at the moment, I am sure that all of us, every one of us has an automatic immediate connection with each other in that we are impacted by what happened today with, you know, that insurrection, you know, those people rioting and invading our house of American democracy and disrespecting all that I personally hold dear as an American, that we have representatives who speak for us, for our voices. Now, that is not really what's been happening in our government for a while. I'm not naive, but America is supposed to be by the people, for the people, not, you know, an insurrective riot destroying and harming. So I'm sure like you, I spent a lot of time this week really meditating on this and wondering what lessons are there to be, to be learned here and what is going on? How, what is healthy? What is unhealthy? How does this go forward? What does it mean? The Akashic librarians whom, you know, of course, they're my go-to for something like this. They showed me three paths. It's three paths they've been showing me for the last year. The first path would be, okay, let me get through this before you react. Suppose Trump had won the election. Yeah, <laughs> I know. If he had, first of all, it would obviously have been an illegal win. And there would have been riots. You know, they, they showed me our streets all across America would have run red with blood and anger. It would have been a complete revolution and overthrow, the like of which yesterday would have paled to. Um, because America will not be won by that obvious of a lion deceit. Um, so very, I mean, very glad that we did not go down that life path. But with Biden winning, all the energies that made this past week happen, they were there. So the question would have been, do they reveal themselves as they did or do they stay undercover? So long as they stayed undercover, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, they have no choice but to rebuild our nation. But if this, these insurrectionists had remained undercover, obviously, we see obviously they have ties in the government, ties in the police force. There's no way that would have happened without that. Our new president and vice president would have been up against a covert group always that could have stood united against them 
preventing them from making progress to help our nation and to help the planet. Because of what happened, and again, I am like horrified and traumatized by this as well, but because this happened and they were in our faces with it and they were stopped, but we know it's still there. Now this has become the stage of potentially the stage of manifesting where we look at what is within us that is blocking us from going forward towards the healthier vision, the healthy vision that we want for ourselves. And now, you know, those who have been standing together are divided, you know, the GIP and the Republicans and the QAnon are no longer a solid front. And now it has been brought to the most Americans perspective. This is happening, this is happening now. And we're demanding our president, you need to do something about this. So now they have support, they have energy to go forward and do the work that they need to do. So I don't, I mean, what happened Wednesday is a very bad thing. But at the same time, if you look at it from a manifesting perspective, and those who join me when I channel the Akashic Librarians, they have been saying it created a great deal of chaotic energy. And when energy becomes chaotic, it's a smorgasbord. Anyone who wants it can eat it for the purposes they wish. So if you wish to consume this energy for making a beautiful planet, go for it. Because when it flies up in the air, eventually it's going to land somewhere. It may as well be with you. When it comes to manifesting, if we are craving a healthy, functioning, prosperous nation where all people are cared for and our rights represented, we now see all of that debris within our nation that needs to be cleared so that we can go forward. So, all the skills that we learned today on manifesting for self are the exact same skills that would be applied to manifesting for our nation. And if you are looking to have a wholesome healing planet, if you want to work on like healing pollution or supporting animals, it's the same. The technique is always the same. So I invite you to these techniques we're working on today to bring soul families, you know, to feel connected to those who get you, your tribe. It will be the same technique for all of this. And if you do not wish to feel um, victimized any more than, you know, if you don't want to feel like a victim to what's happening, because this is outside of our hands, understand in the 3D political world it is, but in the energetic world, we have the ability to go forward and heal and manifest. Um, so that's all I have to say on that matter, that um, this big thing that's kicked up all this energy has opened all of our hearts and souls, like opened our chests wide to make it easier for us to look into ourselves and say, what do I need to release so that I no longer feel like I'm anyone else's victim? I am my own person. And we are each empowered to do that. So, um, I have a little anecdote to share with you that sort of fits in. Um, I'm just going to adjust my blind for a second so I can get a little more. Ooh. Oh, now I'm very bright. <laughs> the problem with having my office with a big window, right? I'll be shifting around as we talk. 
So I'm going to share with you an anecdote that is um, years ago when I owned my wellness center. Um, and it was a big and very active wellness center. We did 30 to 40 events every month. We had multiple healers, be it uh, holistic medical doctors, acupuncturists, uh, angel healers, shamanic, like all kinds of healers. We also had a gluten-free bakery and a vegan food truck. Um, so we were very, very busy. We had like so much wonderful energy flowing through. And then, um, I don't know, like over a period of like a couple of months, like all business stopped. I didn't know what was going on. It was like really traumatizing because suddenly I had no customers, no clients, just out of the blue. It was so weird. And um, I, um, a friend of mine showed up and said, why don't you come with me? I'm going to a puja for Lakshmi, which is a Hindu ceremony. And Lakshmi is a goddess of like joyous abundance, um, you know, on any level, health, wealth, desire. And so <laughs> there we go. So I went with her and it was really amazing beautiful ceremony and uh, you know after a puja they feed you amazing food it was unbelievable and I was surprised because this was like I don't know an hour more drive away from my home but I ran into friends there and someone invited me to another puja to Lakshmi and I went to that and I ran into all these friends like one thing led to another and in a 10 day period of time, 10 or 12 days, I attended like five pujas to Lakshmi. It was just crazy how that all fell into place. Um, and by the end of that, everything I held dear had fallen apart. Like, everything in my life blew up. Um, and I remember I was sitting in my office sobbing when my friend who had come by the first time to invite me to the puja happened to stop by. She said, I just got a feeling you needed to talk with me. So I thought I'd come over. And I was just like sobbing. And I was telling her, I just learned that my chef is a drug addict and he's been stealing from me. And so I fired him and he trashed my wellness center, trashed it, like furniture turned upside down, shelves pulled over. And um, I was like, now I have no one to run my food truck or the bakery. And I just don't have it in me to train another person how to do this you know, and like no one is attending any of my classes and like I don't have any clients or customers and all of the people who work here are getting better offers elsewhere. I was like, everything is in ruin. And she said, oh, wonderful. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? And she said, now you see everything that has been blocking your success. And she sat there and she helped me process that my chef who turned out to be a big time alcoholic drug addict and he was like dealing drugs out of my food truck my beautiful organic vegan gluten-free food truck you know and <laughs> there we go and um you know she said and you're yeah of course he you trusts your space because your space needs a total energetic clearing she helped me go into my gift shop and my classroom it was a mess and she helped me clean everything and we saged it and we got out singing bowls and we energetically healed it um and you know she helped me look at everything and that like people who were working with me 
at my wellness center, some of them just needed a little more support and some of them, they were really better suited to be elsewhere uh, with a different frequency. But literally within 24 hours of that, amazing healers started coming in and asking if they could bring their clients to work there. And like that night, the event I had that night, I think it was a white light energy manifestation healing ceremony. The place was packed with all these people showing up going, I don't know why I haven't been here the last few months, but then today I remembered you're doing your white light thing. So I thought I had to come. Like, it was like, energetically everything shifted everything cleared and business was really fruitful after that so this is why when i see all the destruction that happened in our capital I'm like oh yeah i can relate to that on a personal level and okay there we go and when we're manifesting and if you're feeling like you are being held victim by something happening in a greater uh, scheme, in a greater state of being that is outside of your control, for me to remember this moment when everything I held dear fell apart, but in putting it back together, it became even more wonderful than I ever could have dreamed of, gives me hope for what's happening now. And I have certainly been spending a lot of time helping to manifest energy, you know, for this to, to help with this. So, um, so I don't know if anyone in my group has any questions in my Zoom group, but um, if you do at any point, feel welcome to ask questions or comments. Um, so when you're looking at relationships, people who are in your life. I will tell you honestly, when it comes to manifesting, the two most requested, the two big requests I get from any of my clients, if they come in for a past life reading or an energy healing or anything, is Benita, how can you help me to either A, you know, better career with more money, you know, like a promotion or whatever, or B, find my soulmate. Those are the two biggest requests, no matter what reason anyone comes to me. And these are things that hopefully we'll learn here. <laughs> a lot of times I'll say, you want me to help you find your soulmate? Aren't you married? And they're like, yeah but I'd rather have someone else maybe, or, you know, as soon as I find my soulmate, maybe I'll leave my spouse. I'm like, mm, we got some things to work on here. <laughs> um, and usually when we work on them, often they'll find that they're happily reconnected with their spouse, or they're happily just like evolving with their career in a way that works well for them. So, what is a soul mate versus like a soul family? Um, we bat around the term soul mate so much thanks to like fairy tales and romance novels, you know. But while we do, not everyone has a soul mate. I don't have a soul mate because I originated in a collective. Um, so, understand it's not guaranteed that every person has a soul mate some do and that is like someone who um you connect with with and there's not just one way it could be you were one life that separated into two so you're each other's yin yang for eternity or it could be it's another soul that you sparked and resonated with you know like any time in our like almost eternal life cycle, there are many ways to connect with a soul mate. However, we do not always incarnate with our soul mate. I mean, could you imagine if every single life you and your soul mate had to meet and fall in love? Like, that's just like, how would that even work while we're trying to evolve ourselves as, you know, 
higher states of being through our incarnation cycle. There are many times when you're in life and your soulmate is watching over you as like a guardian or vice versa. Or there are times when you and your soulmate may incarnate as siblings or as best friends. Like you're not always, you know, romantic. Or if you really need someone to teach you a life lesson that you don't, you need to trust someone to be able to teach it and it's a hard one, you might ask your soulmate. So in a life, your soulmate may be highly abusive to you to teach so that you can guarantee to learn your lesson. You know, they're like, it's not always about now we're in love and happily ever after. So understand when you say, oh, I want to find my soulmate. You're not actually asking for your soulmate. You're asking for someone to help you feel complete. And of course, that may be romantic or maybe like a best friend who gets you. Like most of us, we're looking for someone who we can just relax and be ourselves with, you know? Uh, and of course, most of us do want a romantic partner that also fits that category. Um, but there's also your soul family. <laughs> I am sorry. I'm having the worst time with light today. The sun keeps going in and out, but it'll be beyond the horizon soon. <laughs> so your soul family is a group of souls that as you're going through your evolutionary incarnation process, you guys are sort of like in a class together. Like you sort of resonate in a similar compatible frequency and you're learning a lot of lessons around the same time. Imagine like you're going to school together. And when you are in life, your soul family is looking out for you and vice versa. You know, our souls don't like go to sleep when we're in life. In fact, some of us may be incarnating in more than one life at the same time, but our souls are so very active. So your soul and the souls of everyone in your soul family are actively looking out for you and for each other, all everyone who's in life at the moment, you guys are watching over each other. So in a way, you are like um, the guardian angels for each other, except a more human-ish guardian than an angelic one. Um, so sometimes we make sure that members of our soul family are in our lives to help us, like, because you're so used to working together that you get into a groove with each other very easily. Um, so when we're calling out, it's really important if you're manifesting to think at this moment, what am I calling out for? And the good news is you have as many opportunities to call out as often as you like. So it's not just like one shot and then you lose it you can say, I want to call out to my soul family. And it is amazing who will start showing up in your life. You can say, I want to call out to someone who completes me romantically, or I want to call out to someone who will help me figure out how to get my life where I want to go. Or, you know, there are so many things that you can call out for. So, if your soul family is out there, they're out there with a specific resonance of being. If you learn to connect with that resonance, not just your very small group of soul family people who might be, I don't know, five, 10, 20, 50 people scattered all around our planet, but everyone who can connect with that resonance, everyone whose soul family finds that frequency 
can come out and find you, connect with you. It's a little more of a challenge now with, you know, all the COVID quarantining. However, it's a little less of a challenge because everyone's online all the time. <laughs> so we're literally opening up the world for our ability to connect with those that we wish to have a heart's connection with. So think a little bit about what it is that you feel like you'd like to connect with at this moment. We'll do a few connections, so don't worry. It's not your only shot. And while you're thinking about that, I'd like to talk with you briefly about how it is we even come into life. When you think about it, none of, each of us is a well-designed life. Each and every one of us. None of us is by happenstance. Your soul is there with your soul family, doing your soul stuff. And your soul goes, I need to learn a lesson. I'm ready for my next incarnation, my next karmic challenge. And your soul will talk with whomever your soul feels is necessary for um, planning the next life. It may be the Akashic librarian. Um, your guardian angel is always there. Uh, possibly your teachers, your mentors, the rest of your soul family. Possibly someone invites you, like they're like, okay, I have to go to life and I would love it if you would join in for this part. So you already have a point you need to design the life around. But you look into yourself. What is the next karmic lesson or lessons I need to learn? And then you look at what are the lives that are options. You sit in this room where you actually review multiple possible lives and then you choose one you choose one and you choose your path you plan out your life path your soul contracts whom you're going to meet in life you know times that when things happen and then you come to life and you wipe the slate clear because if you remember everything that you planned then in life you'll just be like you know, it's more like living a movie than living a life, right? So we wipe all, all of our memory and then we go into life and this beautifully well-planned vision becomes a crazy improv. We don't know what's going on and we make all kinds of mistakes and nothing goes as planned and you have a soul contract to meet with a certain place at a certain time with a certain person and they don't show up. So now you feel compelled to go ahead with some sort of life project, feeling like there should be someone helping you. It's too much to go alone, but you go ahead anyway, because that person is somewhere else doing something else or people who agreed to be a certain way with you things happened in their life that messed them up and now they're not the way they're like there's maybe you're supposed to have nurturing parents but your parents didn't get the childhood they needed so now they're angry alcoholic parents and you're always like boy I didn't I feel like this is not the life I was supposed to have like nothing goes according to plan ever but because we planned it out you have a choice of either, like magnetically, we often find ourselves drawn back to the plan that was passed out. It's there in your subconscious. It's a driving force that compels you to make certain choices that keep bringing you back to your life path. Or sometimes you just go so off your life path that this path will get put in reserve for another life and you have a new, brand new, totally freeform life. That happens too. So 